This week on Hermitcraft. <laughs> this week on Hermitcraft. <laughs> me. Welcome to the Hermitcraft recap. My name is Pixel Riffs. Our writer is Loy XP. Captions on this video were provided by Liara. And in a bizarre twist of circumstances, today's episode is filmed in front of a live studio audience. Yay! Yay! Yes. Here, Hi. have some coffee. Because yes, it turns out the crossover was a double crossover, and the cast of Empire's SMP is currently finding out how the other half lives on the Hermitcraft server. Which is how come I'm standing in front of B-Dubs' coffee shop with a cup of Joe and an actual Joe Hills, delivering the recap in front of anyone who wanted to show up. Tips are welcome folks, I'm just going to spend them all at Iron Chant anyway. And this is the first time I get to put local humour into a recap. The Hermits are basically now executive producers for this episode, and although there's no guarantee that jokes will be cut, it seems quite likely that I will be. But anybody who didn't turn up at this coffee shop was apparently unwilling to have their beans roasted. And for those of you wondering if this makes the recap official, have you considered that me being here could make the entirety of Hermitcraft unofficial? Fire him! Kill him! Can when did we him? hire him? Or at least the crossover kind of is, because despite a few of us playing around with the phrase we joined Hermitcraft, we are still in the bizarro world of the crossover. So don't expect this recap to start covering Empire's episodes. We cover the Hermit's videos, and nobody on Empire's counts as a Hermit, unless your name is Gemini Tay or False Symmetry. But I'm still missing a few of the potion effects as to how we got here, so let's take a look at all the events and mishaps that led to everyone returning to the Hermitcraft server this week. Oh no, is, is, is that a thing that works? If only. I think I, it, oh. it would it would be so good if there was some kind of like trap under trap the stage. Door. Yeah, and I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> we we don't like his act. Do Send him to the pit. At one point, I could just do this. Oh. Wait, oh no, and they just close you in. <laughs> no, 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 I'm just. <laughs> no. <laughs> Last we saw our heroes, they were hanging out on the Empire's server, led there through a reality rift by Grumbot Prime, the interdimensional robot that came through that rift in the first place. In their absence, XB Crafted and Vintage Beef have had a lot of time to get very familiar with each other. You know, it'd be really cool if, like, you flew into somebody and it, like, did damage to them. Right. Or at least just knocked them back a little bit. Oh, yes. Knockback would be perfect. <laughs> knockback. And then you could enchant rocket, your helmet with, like, knockback. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> We just came up with a brilliant idea. Why aren't we running this game? It's no surprise they know how to push each other's buttons, by which we mean XB Crafted pushing Vintage Beef's buttons to roll the stats for his card in the card game. We've had to make a variation on this joke, every script Beef completes a card, and we're looking forward to him being done because A, the game looks awesome, but B, the bottom of this barrel is looking very scraped at this point. Some actual card game brainstorming gets done, including ideas like what if we Yu-Gi-Oh'd but vertically. Yeah, we could do two walls, so one behind each player. Right. And then, mm, yeah, if you're standing here, you could look over there and be like, okay, I see what that guy's got. And... But XB Crafted has to get back to planning the waterways of his cave base, now with even more modern conveniences like mud and bridges and waterlogs leaves oh i mean that's not bad i feel like like if the wa if the frog stayed close to water why why are you why why are you going away but this one's like so lit up it's fine beef also gets the honor of bringing back a hermit that even grumbot couldn't muster wells knight makes an appearance to roll the stats for his card and offer some explanations for why he's saluting with the wrong hand yes that that now that i look at that and realizing that that is indeed a salute uh, yes, that, that, that would be the wrong hand. Okay. Maybe I'm just waving. Gazing off into the distance. So you're kind of There like covering... we go. Yes. Yeah, we'll Ooh. go with that. <laughs> you we'll, really we'll saved that. me from... Beef is even hinting at the idea of incorporating Hell's Knight, Evil Azuma, and some of the other alter egos into a future expansion pack when the whole Hermitcraft server gets an expansion pack of its own. Fantastic. <laughs> it's good to have them back, I guess. But as you know, the Hermits on the other side have been in trouble. The Rift has sealed them off on Empires, and there's no Grumbots to lead their way back. That's why, on some level, they have built their own Empire, called Hermitopia. And it already being a tangled mess of redstone, it didn't take much to plug a mustache into the hardware, and voila, you've got yourself a Grumbot. More advanced than any of the originals, even, as this one farms wool. Yeah, and let me tell you that they have a wool farm in that. Puts you to shame. Oh, Captain, I'm so sorry to tell you this. Their wolf what? farm is very incredible. Well. No, oh, no, she, she's going Catherine. at it. She's got the axe. <laughs> Though, if you want to be pedantic, Mumbo Jumbo had nothing to do with this Grumbot, so really we should be calling Emperor Grumbot Emperor Greenbot instead. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to pin the blame more precisely. You'll know why. But Green is cashing in all his microchips in the hope that this Grumbot will be able to reopen the rift. Where is he, Green? Uh, Green? Where is Mumbo? 
In the knowledge that it had helped the hermits head home, Pearlescent Moon actually helped redesign Grumbot's outer casing, so maybe we should call him Girlbot. Thanks. Oh, I'm being set on fire for my jokes. Drink you water! <laughs> Drink water! Yeah, but seriously, why not Pearlbot instead of Girlbot? I mean, the, it's, it's got to have green, it's in, have it green in it somewhere. Yeah. Oh, is it girl? the G? Girl, 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 with a yeah, yeah, a real Amer girl? a real American grill. <laughs> And when Azuma lets her know the rift is reopened, Pearl stops by Sanctuary for an emotional goodbye with Mystical Sausage. So emotional, in fact, that it tear jerks them right back to Empire's Season 1, where they find a familiar farmstead with a golden goose and race each other back to Empire's Season 2. Oh, you know, you don't want sausage. How about you yeah. take this as my final parting gift to you? Are you leaving? You. Whoop. Work! There it is! Oh! Oh! Wow, that is so cool! In a similar fashion, Sheriff Jimmy and Good Times with Scar have a moment. After all, Scar has been incredibly kind to him, and more importantly to his base. You define yourself. You're an MCC champion. You put I your am. head up yes. high. Put your head up high. I want to see it high. There we go. You're an MCC champion. You are a sheriff of a great and powerful empire. You are Jimmy the Sheriff, the most powerful empire, and MCC clutch champion. There, I bestowed that upon you. And this. Wait, a gift hot. for you. Guy Bo? The magic is ruined somewhat when Jimmy realizes he doesn't actually have to let Scar leave and just puts his own deputy under arrest. Even then, no prison shall hold him and Scar escapes because one server is too few for a guy this hot. But just know that you are my, my favorite deputy, okay? The same goes for Gemini Tay, who is canonically just playing on both servers. And having found out that all her friends are leaving, Jem lays down and dreams herself back to Hermitcraft, despite A, her being in the sun cult where you can't sleep during the day, and B, Orion sound wailing ain't no sunshine when she's gone, one building over. Ain't no sunshine when he's gone. Oh. It's not warm when he's away. Baby. Ollie, <laughs> we'll convince Damn. people to come to the room. Don't worry, this is a beautiful oh, orchid. Oh, it's me. Look at this orchid. All the better, her Hermitcraft antlers fit much more with the upcoming winter holiday season. Gemini Slay indeed. Fantastic. <laughs> wow, that took me. <laughs> Rendog has one more favor to ask from the Empire is going to see local witch Shovel on the off chance she can help him relocate his house to Hermitopia with magic. He sells her yet another item guaranteeing an IOU from Pixel Rifts, which reminds me I need to talk to Shelby about something after this, and she brews him up a potion of moving house. Turns out it's more than just the house that moves, because stepping through a nether portal, Ren finds himself back in the simulation of Season 8, and Mythical Sausage is also here to bear witness to the Octagon Shop right before the end of the world. The apocalypse is coming, please pay in the barrel. They're just in the process of figuring out if Doc M is around when they get zipped back, and luckily for Rendog, his giblets are still intact, and all he has to do is abracadabra his house onto Hermitopia, because it turns out witches are also capable of movie magic. Abracadabra Shubliaramus! Can't believe how much time I saved, because it would have taken a really long time to take down the entire house and then rebuild it onto the Hermit Tower. Thank goodness for shovels and thank goodness for lore, because um, I probably wouldn't have got the episode out in time if it wasn't for the lore. The silver screen sorcery is only just beginning. For one, the widescreen TV of Girlbot is finally plugged in once Green is done giving him creepy Metaton hands. Grian's gamble is that the AI will somehow tune the rift to allow Hermit's safe passage to their own realm, which he does once he's able to locate the wider Grumbot network, evaluate the Empire's realm, and something something multimodal reflector sorting. Basically, he turns it off and turns it on again. Connection established, rift open. Okay, right, yeah. Oh. More importantly, Girlbot is immediately upset with the world, and not just because he's a robot who people shoot in the face to talk to him. His gripe with empires comes from the realization that with no mumbo jumbo on the server, there's no one to be made mayor. So he finds no value in empires and swears to purge what he sees as a world with no purpose. Uh. No, 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 it's none at all. This is the sanest robot I've ever met, and I've met some robots, I can tell you. Do not destroy. Empires, we have Mumbo at home. At face value, which is basically all Grumbot has, that doesn't seem all that threatening. He has no movement capabilities, what's he gonna do? Farm wool at us? 
Then, on the other hand, which Grumbot also has, a computer in charge of a literal factory seems capable of doing a factory reset. Still, the rift is tuned to the correct channel and the hermits are ready to leave. The trouble is, after they do, Girlbot has the potential to go ballistic. So we have no choice but to go ballistic on him first, setting up a fail-safe missile that will be ready to launch if negotiations break down, ignoring the fact that Grumbot's arms have exposed redstone and he could be defeated with a water bucket. Boo! <laughs> Why do we think of that? Yeah, I have no idea. We're, we're oh. here now, Sausage. We can't rewrite he history. Need arms. The stage is set for a showdown between the two factions. The Hermits, who want to go home but have just built a potentially genocidal robot, and the Empires, who want them to stay, either because they've developed a profound attachment to the Hermits, or because they think genocidal robot is a problem that's better solved by the people who built it. Hence why, when the Hermits show up to the Rift, they find Fort Riffless waiting for them, built by Goblin King Fwip, who's both a little miffed that the big robot wants to destroy his world, but might be equally upset that he'd have to say goodbye to Tango. Hello. Hello and welcome to Fort Riffless. What can we do for you? Well, you've definitely got a Riff in the Riffless Fort. No, no there's no Riff out. There's, a, there's a Pixel Riff right there. I, my name no, is no, no, Pix huh? now. My His name is Pix. Fort name is Pix. He's renounced it. He's renounced is the Riffs. He's... Right. The Hermits launch an assault on the fort, TNT cannons let fly, and voice chat chaos descends on both sides of the conflict. The traps laid for the Hermits are not enough to contain them forever, and they breach the rock wall to find the rift is ready to take them home. Meanwhile, thanks to an unfortunate death, Grian lingers on the Empire's side long enough to see the missile make contact with his robot son and blow the whole face sky high. When did you make this?! I have no blocks to stop this! I can, I'll grab him. Go, I go, can go, save go. him! Oh, Why have you done this to my little grandpa? I yeah, can't believe, I believe you've done this. You but despite the navigational computer going offline, the rift remains open, and some of the Empire's members enter the Hermitcraft dimension, causing this recap to loop in on itself. <laughs> this week on Hermitcraft, <laughs> me. Welcome to the Hermitcraft recap. My name is Pixel Riffs, our writer is Loy XP, and trust me, that joke will land way better if you actually <laughs> see the clip right after. Despite being put through all manner of bizarre trials over the last few weeks, the Hermits immediately show their generosity, handing over food, diamonds, wings, and rockets, all so we can escape from Grian's basement and have a good time doing it. Joe Hills immediately makes a Sliders reference upon their return, promise me you'll never change, Joe, and gives Ollie his wings and rockets, which gives Joe the problem of how he gets out of Grian's basement. Cleo, I'll give Ollie my elytra, because yeah. I think I can end a pearl out of here. I'm yeah, overconfident so. in all things. Oh, wait, no, the Empire's people start settling around the server. Fwip and Joel, for example, stop by the Scarland Amusement Park, as it's the most prominent place with a hotel in it. Fwip even rents a suite, as well as ordering room service, as in, please build a room here service, the place doesn't have a bedroom. Luckily, <laughs> Scar also owns the Mattress Storm... Mattress Door Matador Store. Gosh, I hate when he writes like that. The Matador Mattress <laughs> Store. It's it's written the other way round in the script, and I'm going to try and read it that way, but yeah, it's definitely... <laughs> Luckily, Scar also owns the Mattress Door Matador Store, and as fun as it is to say, Fwip is going to have more fun trying to get into his new bedroom since Scar put a Ravager in there. You gotta let me help you. You gotta let me help me before it's too late. <laughs> no. I just spent two hours making that rail line. General Scarland gets a facelift as well, though that has more to do with the winter holidays approaching. Scar decorates Main Street for the season and even puts in a giant Christmas tree at the head. So does I Jevin, though his Christmas spirit first stumbles over the Halloween decorations he hasn't been present to take down. This is wild. I can't believe we've been gone for that long. All right, the banners have been switched over. It actually looks really good. I like it a lot. So I'm very happy with this. Now, I wonder, should we do any other type of decoration for Christmas? Let me know. Cubfan, in the meantime, is just happy to be home and gives a nice loving hug to his murder box. After all, home is where the Total Chaos minigame is, and hey look, there's still some bits of his friends left in the cogs. And I just want to say a big thank you to all the Hermits for participating in Total Chaos during the charity event, and finally say a big thank you once again to all of you who donated during the event and helped out in other ways. Coincidentally, Total Chaos is what seems to have gone on at False Symmetry's palace while she was away on the Rift mission. As she comes back to the server, False sees a rippling circle of energy form over the peak of her castle. Some machinery hasn't been shut down inside, and by now it has torn itself apart pretty significantly. Okay, it's been it's been a while since I came back. Um, not not great. Uh, can't lie, not not great. In the wreckage, False reveals an entire basement lab now decrepit and broken the experiments having perished or run away. What's more, despite the destruction, it's easy to recognize the lab as the interior Empire's False has been seeing in her dreams and visions. So I guess we'll be keeping an eye on both of the Falses for a little while longer. Don't need a lab anymore, it was mostly just the whole her, um, 
you know, and, and a few little other things, but generally speaking... By contrast, Gemini Tay's basement under her castle is just fine and continuing on its wild quest of collecting everyone's heads. Which, now that there's even more players running around the server, Gem is happy to take on a whole new murder spree. Pretty messed up dreams the High Priestess is having, huh? Take it. Take it. It's a lovely head. It's a collector's edition. Oh, wait, there's lava right there. Don't die right there. Got it. Vintage Beef is too excited to have everybody back to be concerned about losing his head. I was able to break the news to him when I stopped over to check out the card game build area. But just in time for him to reach the graveyard shift of the alphabet, Azuma returned to roll his stats and takes enough interest in the game's mechanics that Beef dedicates the rest of the video to explaining all the rare card's special moves, like the ironically named Quite Simple, a mumbo ability which is the most complex of the lot. Flip a coin twice, plus 40 HP damage for every heads. Total damage doubles if at least one other prankster type is AFK. If player does not roll heads at least once, the above does not apply. And while I'm sure many of you were excited to hear him utter the words expansion pack, I want to stress that the whole point of this crossover was not to make more work for vintage beef. And that's about it for this week's recap. Our writer is Loy XP. My name is PixelRiffs. Captions on this video were provided by Liara. Thanks so much. You've been a great, if violent, audience. I'll be here all week. <laughs> Got and, him! and that's my cue to exit the stage. <laughs> make sure you tip the baristas. They do great work. They make a weapons grade latte here. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. I, I had no oh, idea how. I don't know how Loy's going to edit any of this, but sure. Oh, he's going to have a good time. I, yeah. He, he's, good luck. He's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He will rue the day. Yeah. Yeah, we're just here to make Zoy's life a living hell. It's okay. Yeah. Oh, that's literally my own, like, my goal <laughs> in life. Yes. Like, make Zoy's life a living hell. You, you have no Zoy idea how happy that. that will make him to hear you say that. I know, I know. <laughs> it's kind of why I say it. Yeah.